Okay, get ready. Hi everyone, how are you? This is Dina and today is Thursday. It's February 25th and I am back to give you a bit of an update of my stitching for the last few days. I started on Tuesday to meet a prompt in my 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic and it was for the letter I and I have decided that I is gonna it's part of the word linen threads the words linen threads and so that I in linen I had it originally set for something else and then I decided that I wanted to keep working on Easter and so I was gonna use that I for in a row because these little bunnies are all sitting in a row and I wanted to start this, so I did. I pulled it out and I started it, and I did about 323 stitches that day on my uh, more chocolate bunnies. And I didn't have the call for color for this, so I went ahead and used hickory sticks, and I think they look great in hickory sticks. So I got two of them done. I'm gonna be able to work on that again for another prompt which I will be working on today, and that is the R in threads, and it's gonna stand for rabbits. So I get to work on it a second time. So I'm pretty excited about that, uh, that I was able to work that out. In the meantime, in between, uh, on uh, um, Tuesday evening, I decided to go ahead and uh, put that away so I could hit another prompt, because I had at that time about four prompts that I needed to finish. And so this one was uh, for H in threads. And I, I had the H stand for hollow in Sleepy Hollow. And I pulled out my Sleepy Hollow and I decided I would continue working on that for that prompt. And I did, I was able to do the saddle and the saddle blanket, except for the crinic on the border. I'm trying to save all this crinic on the borders of these fabrics um, until I get the stitching done. But I got all that done. That was only uh, 250 stitches, but it was enough for the prompt. And um, I wanted to go ahead and um, make sure you can see that gray on this fabric, but I think it shows up pretty well. Uh, I wanted to hit the prompt and then keep moving because I still have two to get done. So I mentioned I'm gonna do the R for rabbits for there. The last letter I have to do is an A, and I had originally put that in uh, for the autumn bell pull. I may or may not do autumn bell pull because there's one more Easter piece that I wanted to start, and um, it has a vine all the way around, and so that's, I was gonna say, you know, vine all around and have that A stand for around. Um, <clears throat> So I could still do that, and I'm thinking I may do that because that that fits in with my Easter stitching, and that would give me a couple of Easter um, starts that I could carry forward and work on in my whips. So I think that's what I'm probably gonna wind up doing. Anyway, that's my stitching for today. I'm getting ready for March Madness. I'm very excited about that because it's gonna allow me to work on uh, a lot of my current whips for the month of March, which is great. And um, I had a comment on my video, uh, the one that I just put up um, on Wednesday night, and um, it basically it uh, the comment said that they hadn't ever participated in March Madness, but doing it the way I was talking about, they felt like they could. And so Stephanie, I appreciate you uh, coming up with this uh, version of March Madness and I'm excited to get to do it with you. And it looks like we have some other people that are gonna get to do it as well. Uh, so how much fun is that gonna be? I'm gonna enjoy that a lot. I'm gonna let you get back to stitching. I'm gonna get back to my stitching so I have something else to share with you. And I uh, hope you have a great day. Happy stitching. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. Today is Sunday. It is the 28th day of February, so our month of February is coming to a close today. I'm excited because this evening our Georgia Guild is going to have a Zoom stitch together, and I'm hoping to get to join them at least for a while tonight. But I wanted to uh, come by and show you a few things. A couple of things uh, of stitching and stitchy um, kindness. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about my March plans. 
let you see what I've done to get ready. First, we'll start with stitching. The last project that I started for my February festivals for the Valentine stitching through the 14th and then moving on to Easter stitching through today was more chocolate bunnies. These, this is by Hands On Design and I have always thought this was really cute and then I received this as a gift and I put it in my Easter smalls that I wanted to stitch and I'm very, very happy to say that I did get to do this one. I was waiting up pretty late last night because uh, our son was on call at the hospital and got called in around seven o'clock and I thought he would probably be home fairly soon. I figured he was being called in to give dinners, breaks, you know, for people to have their supper, but that wasn't the case. As it turned out, he actually was called in and he had to do three surgeries before he got to come back home. So at 12.30 a.m., he came in the door <laughs> and I had just finished my more chocolate bunnies. I think this is precious, but I've done a couple of things to it that are different and I wanna share those with you. I did not have the called for um, sulky threads for this. I didn't have that pack. So I went through and I got the DMC equivalents of those, which were provided, thank you, Kathy. And then I, um, I didn't have the DMC for the chocolate color for the bunnies and the lettering here. So I used hickory sticks because like Priscilla, I like that color. <laughs> So the bunnies up here are hickory sticks and the first word of the chocolate here is in hickory sticks and I had enough to do the, the ground here. But I knew I would run out if I tried to do that bunnies in the dark hickory sticks. So what I did instead is I pulled out number 07, DMC 07, and decided I would use that lighter color because now I have dark chocolate and milk chocolate represented. My husband loves dark chocolate and I love milk chocolate. So I thought what a better way to display that than to have both of them on there. So that was the main difference, you know, of what I had done. And then it calls for these little tiny white buttons on the pattern, they're very small, for their tails. I was gonna use whisper thread and try to stitch them myself, but then I realized that I wasn't quite sure what size to make each of them. They would need to be a different size I, if I was doing them myself, I think. So instead, I ran to Joann's today and I found these little buttons here and I thought, they're so cute because they're rounded and they are puffy because they have a shank under them uh, that I had to stitch down onto here, but I think they look precious. I really like them. <laughs> So I hope you do, but I do. I think they're gonna look super, super cool um, when I decide what to do with this, whether I frame it or whether I make a big pillow out of it. I'm thinking more now of a frame because there's one other thing I did. In the pattern, the word chocolate, the L right here is actually up into the sign that says more. If you look right here, that L actually is inside that pink section and I didn't like it <laughs> uh, I guess I have a little bit of you know want everything to be balanced and so I dropped mine down to where it was one space below so that's made my piece just slightly larger and I'm stitching this on fabric that I won um, from Sonia from Cat Crazy Creations on a giveaway that she did to celebrate her number of subscribers a while back. And this is 28 count, which made it big as well. But it's a 28 count Lugana and it's in um, light ash gray. That was the name of it. So I think it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of fabric. Uh, I, if I ever get the opportunity to stitch on it again, I probably will. I have a bit at the bottom I can, I can save, I think, for another small. Um, so that'll be great. So this is my final Easter piece for my February festivals. Um, and I, I'm really, really excited about it. So there you have it. 
So I've done eggs and more chocolate bunnies. And then right before February, I did Easter Peep. So I actually have three new Easter pieces that I need to fully finish now in the month of March at some point in time. So as we know, February included Valentine's Day. And so I wanted to share with you um, the sweet Valentine card that my husband got me. I don't normally share things that personal, but I'm not gonna share the writing inside of it, but what I wanted to share with you was the card because I don't know where he found this. Oh, it's a papyrus card, so he found it probably at uh, Target or somewhere, but isn't this perfect for a stitcher? It says, love you, and yes, it is stitched. This is thread, and it is stitched right into the card, and this little heart is stitched. Isn't that precious? And then inside it says, um, one of the things he said was, you are my only stitchy Valentine. And I just thought that was so cute. He really gets me. So I had to share that with you because I had never seen anything quite like that in a card and that hasn't been made, you know, by a stitcher for another stitcher. So my husband did really well this year. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about planning. <laughs> Some of you have said before you like to see the planning videos, so I hope you meant it because we're gonna do a little bit today. I'm gonna show you what I did today. Okay, so here's what I've got to share with you. March is truly gonna be a March Madness month, and it's not just because I'm doing March Madness it's really going to be a March Madness month. And when I show you what all I'm doing, I think you'll understand why I say that. First of all, I am doing March Madness and I shared this rough handwritten version of this um, with you. And um, I now have it on my calendar, which I'll share with you in a minute. But I went ahead on my calendar and I put down my first pairings and I actually put them in. I have a monthly at a glance view and then I have a page for each week that I put behind my month at a glance and this gives me a day at a time to write down what I have to do on that particular day of the week and it gives me more room for more detail. So <laughs> let me share with you what is in this uh, section now. The first thing I did is I went through my March Madness and I put my pairings down so that on the first week when I have to do eight things, I'm stitching two on a day and two on a, another day so that I get all of those done um, in seven days. So, um, well actually two on one day. But on Monday I wrote down that I'm doing Little Sheep Virtues, which is the first one of my pairings. And I wrote on here that I'm doing 200 stitches for March Madness for Stitch for Stash. And then I also have in there a note in parentheses, uh, cross stitch finish line. I'm doing it for one in a series, which is a sale for them. And then I'm also doing it for another thing. I'm gonna have to stitch 300 stitches for a monthly um, prompt that I'm working on where I have to, I'm using it for a piece that's a part of a series. That's the prompt I'm having to meet. So there are two different Facebook groups that have a one of a series that I'm working on for this one piece. So I have to do 200 stitches for March Madness, but I have to do 300 stitches for the other prompt. So I'll stop and take a picture at 200 and post it, and then I'll stop and take a picture at 300 and post it. But for that one day, 300 stitches in that one piece is gonna meet three prompts three different things that I'm doing that for. So as you can see, the rest of that week is very similar. On Tuesday, I'm supposed to do uh, two uh, projects. One is the Nativity and the other is Giggles in the Snow. Um, they are for uh, my pairing and they're also for acrostics. I have an acrostic for 24 hours acrostic that I'm working on. And I sat and tried to figure out which one I had the best 
uh, match to and uh, even though I don't use plastic bags anymore I do use project bags I could meet these letters easier so that's the one I'm filling out and the other acrostic I have is for my monthly magazine sale and I actually you have two you can do you can pick one or the other or you can do both and I've actually got both of them filled out because doing March Madness I'm gonna be using all those things and so what I tried to do is I took my March Madness pieces and wherever possible I made them work for an acrostic so that I'm counting it in this group and in this group and in that group but I'm only having to stitch it one time that's how you get it done you double dip <laughs> that's just the way it is and so I'm also we got our whip go numbers and you'll see I have colored in Move my calendar over there for falls I have colored in the two new ones with just a green pencil and the new ones that I can work on starting tomorrow is winter arbor I'm supposed to stitch the first row that's a new start and then autumn bell pull I'm to finish a letter and that's great because I have been working on the letter a for a while and I probably don't have much more than two to three hundred stitches to finish it I'm hoping and so I'm gonna be able to do that one pretty easily. The other two that are left to work on that are green are both brand new starts. So I'll have to have two new starts in the month of March if I wanna get started on them. But I wanted to make sure that I had those in my March Madness. So I had left a space for them, calling it um, whip go number one and whip go number two, and now I have those filled in on my calendar. So in the first week, I have at least one of my whips that's part of my March Madness that I'm stitching the 200 stitches for that week because in my first week I'm stitching 200 stitches for the March Madness. Anywhere I can double dip them, I am. And if it requires more stitches, I'll just take a picture at 200 and then I will stitch to the next prompt which is 300 and I'll take a picture there. So that takes me through the first seven days, and then you start back over the next week. So starting on the 8th of March, I did the same thing. I've done the um, pairing one on Monday, the, pairing, the winner of pairing two on Tuesday, and so forth. And that gets me through Thursday because I'm only having to do four of those pairings now. And I, but I have to put in 400 stitches. I am banking on getting those 400 stitches in on one day, but in case I don't, I've left Friday the 12th open so that I could catch up on anything I haven't finished on those four. And that gets me through March Madness for the week. So then Saturday and Sunday, the 13th and 14th right now, I have slotted to do two projects, one each day, that are for a different prompt other than March Madness. And it will require 300 stitches on each. And so not only will it meet a prompt, but it's also gonna meet both acrostics, each one of them. So you'll get to see Gathering Eggs and you'll get to see Santaberry Pudding, hopefully, uh, again, coming up in um, March. Then that takes me to the third week. And in the third week for my March Madness, I have to do 600 stitches. So I have allowed myself two days on each one. Now fortunately, I only have to do two because I'm down now to week three. I've gone down from eight to four to two. And so I have two projects I'll be doing those 600 stitches in. And then that leaves me till Friday. And on Friday, I will participate in the Stitchathon and I am gonna use Pandemic to begin with because it's a monochromatic piece and I can hopefully get enough stitches in it to get my name in the drawing. And, um, and so I'm trying to do that over that weekend. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is do my, my whip go requirement for Autumn Bell Pull, which is to finish that letter. And so that gives me, I'm giving myself Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to finish that bell pull, the letter A, and then go on to pandemic and I'll count my stitches for those, those two items for the stitch-a-thon that's coming up in cross-stitch finish line. 
That brings me to March 22nd, and this is the final week of March Madness. And so I have only whichever one of my two projects that I did the week before that is the closest to a finish, and I don't know which it'll be. This will be the surprise for me. I will start stitching it. I am supposed to stitch 800 stitches in those, that winning piece, and hopefully get a finish. So we'll see, but I've got um, two days set aside for that. If I need more, I can take more. And then I'm starting on the 24th or the 25th, somewhere in there, depending on how long it takes me to get those 800 stitches. I will do another whip go prompt, which is my um, number 20, which was called in, I believe, February, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but that is block party on mine, and I, it's a new start for me. And I had said I wanted to put in five hours. So I've got two days slotted for block party in hopes that I can get that started and that I can get five hours of it in it. And it is also for an acrostic. Um, I believe it's on one of them. Then, once I finish that, and I, as I said, I have two days slotted for it, then on the 26th, which is Friday, I would like to go back and start pulling in some of my whips that I haven't been able to stitch on because it wasn't part of my March Madness or it wasn't part of um, my acrostic. Um, so <clears throat> what I have done now is I've pulled out and written down these to choose from. I have crab apple tree I would like to work on. In fact, it is a whip go piece that says I have to finish a whole season to meet my whip go goal. So if I could get a little work on that first season uh, accomplished, that would be great. That would put me in good standing when it is called. And then on Winter Quaker, I wanna work on it because it is also a whip go piece and I'm supposed to finish an entire line of motifs. So if I could get two or three motifs stitched in that line, that would be great. And then on Sunday, the 28th of March, I'm hoping to pull out my Hade, a real snow job, and get some stitching on it. It's also on my Whip Go goals. And I had put, originally, to finish a diagonal because I was diagonal stitching. And now I've decided not to do that anymore because I'm using um, Pattern Keeper and it's so much easier just to do a color completion per page um, that that's kind of what I've moved to. And so I've changed that to complete a page. I have not finished the first page and I still have quite a bit of stitching to do to finish that page, but I would love to have Whipco help me get my first page finish on my, my head. Then on the 29th of March, I have reached back on uh, and picked up one of the pieces that's in my uh, March Madness that I may or may not have finished, depending on how it progresses forward. It's my full coverage Christmas Village ornament. And if I haven't finished it through March Madness, I would like to reach back and see if I can't get it closer to a finish. Maybe even finish it if I can, because I've got through the 31st, so I've got three days that I could go back and work on it maybe get it to a finish. Wouldn't that be neat? That would be so awesome to do that. Um, I'm hoping to do that anyway. Uh, so that is my March Madness. It is crazy, I know. So if you're counting, that means I'm doing March Madness for one Facebook group, the Stitch From Stash group. I am doing my Whip Go Still. I am doing a monthly prompt in another Facebook group where you have uh, 10 prompts to hit, and it's 300 stitches each, and I've, mo I've melded those together in with what I had. It was the other prompt I was talking about. And two acrostics, one for, for the monthly magazine challenge, and the other one for 24 hours cross stitch, and I always do those. And so I didn't wanna leave them off. So yeah, March is gonna be busy. <laughs> The key for me was to sit down and start layering these on top of each other. So that's what I did with my calendar. I wrote everything in for March Madness first, and then I took the next biggest chunk, you know, which was the 10 prompts that you do in a month, and I put those in, and then 
I looked at my acrostics and I looked to see what did I already have slotted to stitch on and I made my acrostics work mostly with those and uh, and then at the end of the month where I had time left over I filled in anything I had missed so if I get all of that done that will be a pretty impressive month of stitching <laughs> I must say <laughs> anyway thanks for letting me share my finish with you February festival has been wonderful and I just want to mention a thank you to Jennifer and Lorna and Lori and Elaine and Clara and the 614 Stitcher, uh, Southern Louisiana Stitcher, Kim, uh, Teresa, Gail, Magpie Stitcher, Amanda, Tammy, Teresa, Stitching Deb, Kim, Stitching Scotty, and Lynn because all of these ladies and stitchers have joined Donna, um, D Squared and I in our February festivals. And if you want to see what everybody stitched, just go look up the hashtag Feb February Festivals 2021 and you'll see some beautiful, beautiful stitching. Um, in fact, there's a couple of them that when I saw what they had been working on, I, I hit my wish list <laughs> for next year because I loved the pieces that they did. So it'll give you a great idea for some, uh, some patterns if you're looking for some Valentine or um, Easter patterns for next year. Well, I'm going to let you get back to your stitching. That's my planning for the day. And I'm going to go in here now and get my family some supper. And then I'll be joining uh, the guild tonight and do a little stitching for fun. So uh, before I get so focused in the month of March. Happy stitching, everyone. Good night. Hi everyone, welcome. It is March 1st. It is the first day of March Madness. I'm so excited. I wanted to let you know though, it has gotten off to a different kind of start than I thought it would. Well, I have to tell you the story. Sunday, our, the president of our Stitchers Guild here in Georgia uh, emailed me and said they were going to have a virtual stitching get together that night at about seven o'clock and she was going to email me an invitation and uh, with everyone else of course but she was just letting me know they were going to get together that night so I could plan on it and I was able to do that but I needed to have something to work on and I didn't want to pull anything forward that was going to be a part of my March Madness because I wanted to keep that true to the plan of starting on March 1st and doing everything you know, in the timetable that I was supposed to. So instead, I looked through some of my uh, whips that I hadn't put in my March Madness, but that I could use potentially in March to meet a prompt. And so um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll stitch on it tonight. I wasn't gonna count those stitches toward the prompt, but it would just kind of get some of it done and just keep making progress on it. And so I thought that would be the best thing to do. So I picked up my um, Santaberry pudding. I had to think for just a second. Um, my Santaberry pudding, which is a shepherd's bush piece, and I've been calling it my band sampler because to me it looks like there are obvious bands in here, uh, little sections as it were. And this is on my Whip Go board. It was on, on the board to stitch an entire band, which would be one whole section across, and I was counting it to be words and the pictures and so I had decided that this would be the band that I would work on. Well recently I did that band for a prompt and I thought well that's okay I have this whole band at the bottom and it's a big band because it's got the words and the picture and the border so that'll be even better. So when I started working on it last night with my Zoom group I got the words done and I got the house done. And then today, on March 1st, I decided instead of picking up my first uh, one of my bracket pieces, I wanted to finish this. I only had the little Santa, the tree, and the border to do. As it turned out, I had a very busy day. I hadn't realized I was going to. 
uh, but I but I did. And so that was about all I've gotten done so far. I hope to be able to get some stitches done on my first bracket piece uh, in just a minute. But I wanted to share with you my Santaberry pudding and tell you a little bit about it because I did finish it today and I'm so excited about it. Here it is. The pattern called for 16 count Ada. I used 32 count, which should have been the same thing, right? Only it's not. I don't think this is actually going to be good on 16 count. I think this is going to need either 14 or 11 count. And I say that because of the buttons. I ordered my buttons from Shepherd's Bush. I got the right buttons. I got them for this pack. Um, they, they had a pack of them for this um, piece. So anyway, they're too big. <laughs> So I had to work on that a little bit. The stitching went great, and then today when I finished and I started putting on the buttons, I ran into a couple of issues. The first one was right at the top. This little star right here was supposed to fit here on this half moon, or the crescent shape of the moon, and if you look at this little button, it would practically cover up that entire crescent moon. And if you look in this one, I'll see if I can show it to you without it blowing out on me. Here is the little button. And you see it's just barely in the point where the two points of the moon would be holding it. Um, so I thought, oh, that's not, that's not the same size. <laughs> that's not gonna work. So I decided not to put it up there. The other thing is there was a heart-shaped button that had a little bit of greenery on it, like a vine, and it was to go right here. But when you put it there, it stuck out. And you can see this has a beautiful border. You know, I didn't want this one button sitting over here, making everything look kind of weird in that one little spot. So I left it off. It's not needed, it's not necessary, it was just a, an embellishment. So I, I just left it off. So I moved on down here, and the button that was in the pack to go in the middle here was this one. Look at that now. Woo! I put that on there and said, no, <laughs> that's too big. It really looks odd. So instead, I took the little button that was to go here and I put it right there and I think it fits beautifully. It's the right proportion to go with these stars that walk, walk across there. So then I thought, great, I can at least use that one. So I came on down here and the next set of buttons were the sleigh and the three reindeer. Now they're a little bit large, but I fit them in there okay. And that I'm all right with, I'm okay. It's not perfect. Um, the one on the picture shows a lot of space in between them, but you know what, it's okay. You get the idea and I think they work all right. So then I came on down to the bottom here and I put the button for the lantern um, hanging on this uh, staff and it is twice the size it's supposed to be, but it does not go down to the border. It fits okay. I'm leaving it there. It's, it's cute. And, and that is actually an element that's needed uh, to go on that end of that staff that he's carrying that lantern with. This house had a wreath button to go on it. Here it is. Now, I want you to look at how much of the house it would cover up, far more than that little heart does. Um, and this house, this house has windows in here with little green shutter-like X's that have gone across them. There's a lot of work in this house, and I didn't want to cover up the entire front of the house, which is what that button would have done. So I just took the heart from up here and it was small enough that it fit about the size that the wreath was supposed to be. So I just used a heart wreath instead. So that's what you have there. So that means I have two buttons I didn't use because they're just too large for this piece. A star, which I could use any other time on another piece that's uh, Christmas or winter, and a Christmas wreath, which of course I'll be able to use later. So I'm not, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> it worked out okay. So that's my finish. 
of Santaberry pudding. So if you're gonna stitch this one, I just recommend that you use nothing uh, with a uh, count any smaller or any larger than um, 14 count, and I, I think 11 count would be even better. But um, I would either do this in 14 count or 11 count next time if I were to do it again, if I was gonna use the buttons. If you're not gonna use the buttons, that's okay. But this is gonna look a little empty in here. You would have to put stars or something in between the row for it to look correct. But you could do that. Anyway, I got so close to this finish last night that I just had to finish it today. Wasn't planned. But that's just how it happened. So anyway, now for March Madness, my very first piece of my um, bracket is Little Sheep Virtues. And so I'm gonna pull it out now and get started on it. I won't get it finished tonight. I have to put 200 stitches in it, but I'll get it finished in the morning and that'll be great. And then sometime tomorrow evening, I will pick up the second one and I'll stitch that one with 200 stitches. Um, I have until the end of the week to get eight of my whips with 200 stitches. And so that's my goal for this week is to get all eight of them done in my March Madness bracket. So you'll be seeing updates from me as I get them finished. But I just wanted to stop by tonight and share my finish with you. <laughs> so that'll be exciting. Well, tomorrow I'm also playing Canasta. In fact, I'm hosting the ladies at my house. So Coco is getting to go play with Fred and her little buddy Muddy might be there as well. So I hope they have a great day. It's supposed to be pretty and that's awesome. My husband's gonna take a nice long run and everybody will have a great day. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I hope your week has started off well. I hope your month of March has started off well. And I just wish for you uh, health, uh, happiness, and um, I guess a productive month with your stitching. And uh, enjoy whatever it is that you're working on. Happy stitching, everyone. Good night. Hi, everyone. Oh, today is Wednesday. It is the 3rd of March, and I'm here to give you uh, some progress on the March Madness. I got started on it as I had planned uh, late Monday evening. Got a little bit of stitching done, finished it up on uh, Tuesday, and um, wanted to show you that first. I didn't get to film Tuesday because I did host some friends over for Canasta, and um, we played two big games of Canasta, and so um, between that and trying to get my family supper and trying to get this stitching finished, it was just too late to film. So I wanted to uh, come today and tell you what I was working on. Little Sheep Virtues was the first one of my whips in my first pairing, and so I um, was uh, to start number five, which would be Faith. And this is the little um, little house uh, needleworks pattern. This is my version that I'm doing all on one piece of fabric. And uh, this is the fifth one, so it's the top of the row. And this is my 302 stitches that I got done on that. I only needed 200 for the... March Madness, but I was working on a prompt uh, in another Facebook group and I needed 300 for the prompt. So I just went ahead and did 302 stitches and um, let that be it because I have a lot to do. <laughs> That's not gonna push it any much further uh, toward a finish than if I had only done 200 stitches. So um, that is my first one. Now, my second one that I worked on today isn't paired with that one. I didn't put them on my calendar to work on them in order because I was working on them based on how much time I thought I would have each day and I wanted to keep 
something that was that was easy to stitch like that and then stitch on something that's harder and then easy and harder. So they'll go back and forth. But the one for today that I was stitching on, which will be paired with a different um, a different piece. This, this one's actually gonna be paired with Giggles in the Snow when we get to compare the two of them. But this is the Nativity. And this was my Teresa Wentzler restart. And um, the last that you saw it, I had completed part of the border and I had completed the tops of both wings and I had come down and done the, um, I think it was this one over here. I had done the little part that comes down. So um, I had said when I come back to do that, I would do this part of the second wing that comes down to the shoulder and then I would probably start on the angel's head in the middle because I think it's important that you stitch the people out here out front because this is in the background. And I want to make sure I have them all stitched without any problems fitting them in. I don't want to stitch something over here and get off and then have to cram them in. So once I make it to here, I'll stitch the three of them I think, I think that's my strategy. Anyway, um, if you recall, this was restarted because the faces are one over one, and when I started stitching them on that little tiny 32 count linen, uh, they got very distorted, and, and that caused me to have a restart. So I am excited to be able to share with you, I finished my goal. So I did the wing, the other section of the wing, and which was, it was this side, I remember now, and I did the hair, and I finished the hair. So I'm excited to be that far along. Um, the next thing I will do is continue working on the angel, um, which might mean that I wind up doing that one over one skin um, on the faces, because that's how they're charted. They're not charted any other way. But if I can get that first one done, then I'll know. I'll know whether this one's going to continue to be stitched or whether it's going to be a give up. Because if I can't get that face to look right, I'm not going to put any more time in it. So I'm really at a good point because now I can work on the face next time. And um, whether I stitch it, you know, whether it wins and goes forward or whether it, it doesn't, the next time I stitch on it will probably be the face. So I'm excited about that. This is moving along beautifully. Uh, tomorrow I'll be working on Giggles in the Snow. And hopefully, if I have time as well, Mermaid. All right, well that is it for today. I'm gonna let you get back to what you were doing. I'm gonna get back um, to uh, straightening up a little bit in here so I can hit the ground running tomorrow. And then I will check back in with you in the next day or two and let you see what I've been up to. Happy stitching, everybody. Happy March Madness. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Dina. It is March 4th, our fourth day of March Madness, and I'm here to give you my update for today. So today, my whip that I was working on was Giggles in the Snow, and this is the pattern that comes with them separate, and I have taken mine and merged them together, and am working on it as one piece. So I'll share you where I got to today. I'm right now working on the little girl. So let me get where I can get close enough to you. Today, I put in 317 stitches. 200 of that was for the um, March Madness. The extra 100 was for another prompt where I needed 300 stitches. But let me show you what I worked on today. I worked on the little girl today, and I did the part of her, front of her jacket now. She has white, collars. It's kind of hard to see that. So let me 
bring it a little bit closer to you. There you go. You can see it a little bit better now. White on white is kind of hard to see. It was a little trying to stitch it today as well. But I started with the little silver part right, right up under her scarf. And then the tan of her jacket, the white of her collar, and came over here and worked down this side of her jacket as well. So just all across here on the little girl's jacket is what I worked on today. So that was my 317 stitches for Giggles in the Snow. In addition to doing my um, March Madness today, uh, again, I used this Giggles in the Snow for two of my cross sticks. So for my 24 hours of cross stitch, acrostic, remember I'm doing the one plastic bags, my Giggles in the Snow was for S in the word plastic, and it was for snow, for Giggles in the Snow. And then in my month, magazine monthly challenge, I had my first letter for the word lion, which is the I, and I used it for in the snow. And my goal was to get at least 300 stitches, which I did, so I'm very happy about that. So right now I've gotten three of the eight of these two um, acrostics, and I have three of the uh, 24 hours of cross stitch acrostics as well, and they have 11. So I've got three of the 11 of that one done. So what's on my um, plan for tomorrow? Uh, my plan for tomorrow is to stitch on The Mermaid by Teresa Wensler as one of my pairings. And then if I get that one done in time, to stitch on the um, Christmas Village Ornament. That would be the next one that I need to get 200 stitches on. So those will be my attempts <laughs> for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, and so I get to talk to my sister Stephanie in the morning. So I will be up early, and um, we talk first thing in the morning, and then I'll get busy stitching. So we'll see how it goes. I do have a hair appointment tomorrow. I get to get my hair cut. And so that'll take part of the afternoon as well. Well, I'm going to hit the hay. I'm going <laughs> to call it a day here and uh, go and start first thing in the morning. So happy stitching to you. I hope your March Madness is going well if you're uh, participating. And whatever you're stitching, I hope that it's going smoothly and that the frog is far, far away from you. <laughs> happy stitching, everyone. Hi everyone, welcome, this is Dina. It is the 6th of March. It is late on a Saturday evening and I just wanted to come and give you an update on how things have been progressing for me in March Madness. So I wanna start first with my pairings and where I am with them and then I'm gonna give you just a little bit of uh, a happy mail and then we'll be done for, the, for tonight and I'll get back to stitching. So my project, that I was working on today was Mermaid by Teresa Wentzler. And when I started on it today, I had this gold outline of the border from that medallion to here and from here down to the bottom. I don't, um, I had the square of the medallion down there. So I went from this square up and across to this square. And then I had come in and I had worked on this medallion in the center there, and I had I had completed it the last time you looked at it. And I had taken the first color um, across here in the border. Now that border is like a seashell border going across, if you can see that. Um, it's like little seashells, and they're turned facing one direction, or and then like this direction on this end, and that direction over here. So anyway, you have to, to stitch it one way and then in the middle you have to flip and stitch it the other way. But it's quite lovely. So today when I started on the border, I picked up another color of the 
blue in that border. And then I did uh, three more colors and I got in this piece 224 stitches. And this is where it is now. So I, I was able to get uh, that blue that's gonna surround those seashells at the top. And then there's also gonna be something at the bottom like that too, and then you do the seashells. Uh, will be in the middle, but that's how far I got there. So let's talk about the pairing of this piece and the one it was in competition with. This piece, Mermaid, was paired with Little Sheep Virtues. And I have worked on Little Sheep Virtues and I have shown it to you, so I can now tell you which one's gonna get to move forward. I don't think it'll be any surprise to you. My Little Sheep Virtues, the entire border is already finished. This one is only half done. And in my Little Sheep Virtues, the block that I was working on for this event is the last block of the top row. So it is almost finished, and that's only three rows across. There's only three rows. So when I finish that little block, I'll be a third of the way done with this project. This project is a long way from a third of the way done. <laughs> it's nowhere near a third of the way done. So that means in my book, My Little Sheep Virtues is gonna move forward into next week out of this pair. The bonus for me is that working on her today, I just fell in love with her. I just, this stitching is so easy and it's so beautiful and the fabric is so beautiful. This is Queen Anne's lace, it's just gorgeous. I really, really enjoyed stitching on her. So uh, I'm really happy about that. Now my second pairing that I can talk to you about, you've seen them as I worked on them, it's the Nativity and Giggles in the Snow. And see, I told you I tried to pair things together that were kind of the same size. But my Giggles in the Snow, I've gotten all the way to the page break on the little boy, and this time I worked on the little girl's neck and shoulders and her part of her jacket. And so um, probably, if you had to say how how you know much is done, it's not quite 50% because I've got to finish her top half, but I would say it's a good 40% done. And as you probably can figure, Nativity isn't 40% done. Nativity has the top border done except for specialty um, fibers and beads. And it has the tops of the angel's wings and his hair, and that's all. So I think that my Giggles in the Snow is much further along than my Nativity. So my Giggles in the Snow will move forward into next week. So I'm happy about that. So where do we go from here? It's Saturday night. I've only been able to complete stitching on four of my eight projects. So here's what I'm gonna do. Two of the remaining four projects are brand new starts. They're my two whip go pieces. And so I have no idea how far I will get on them with just 200 stitches or you know how much that will push either of them to a finish. The pieces that go with them, um, one of them is also a new start and the other one is my Christmas Village ornament, which is a full coverage piece. But I'm about, I'm about a third of the way done with that. So it depends on how far 200 stitches pushes that. If that one is at least halfway done and my new starts aren't anywhere near halfway done, that one may get to move forward, I don't know. So at this point, um, my Winter Arbor, which is a brand new start, is gonna be paired against the Christmas Village ornament. Now my Winter Arbor is the drawn thread and it has just bands across it, you know, that you stitch. And it can go fairly quick. Um, where full coverage doesn't necessarily go very quick. So what I'm gonna do is see how many stitches I get um, in the first, you know, in, the, in this week of 200 on my new start. And then I'll calculate how far another 200 stitches would take me on my Christmas Village ornament before I decide which one of those gets to move forward. And this last pairing is a new start here, a peep, there a peep. And then in addition to that, it's gonna be paired with my autumn bell pull. 
Now my autumn bell pull is very long. <laughs> my hope is to be able to finish that first letter A because that is my whip go goal. And if I can get that done, I'll feel like I have a win-win. I'll get that finished on whip go and then I'll just keep working on here repeat there repeat until it's finished, you know. So we shall see how that one goes. So it looks as if I've got two more decisions to make and I promise you that by tomorrow night, whether I've gotten to stitch on them or not, I will make a decision what moves forward and I will let you know what that is tomorrow night and then I will put this up for you to see how my first week <laughs> in March Madness has gone. Okay, now let's talk a little, just a brief moment about happy mail and then I'll uh, say goodnight and I'll go back to my stitching and um, I'll be back with you in a few minutes, hopefully with my decision for tomorrow night. I wanna share with you this card. This card envelope is made to look as if it is a clothing pattern, a sewing pattern of what you would cut out to make a garment. I absolutely adore it. I used to make a lot of my own clothes. I used to sew quite a bit. And the minute I saw this card, I knew exactly what it was and I was thrilled. It's so, so cute. Then the card on the inside, this is just exactly what a pattern front looks like, in case you didn't sew. And this is exactly what the pattern back looks like of the, of the little envelope. And the envelope, has all these tissue paper pattern pieces for you to cut out inside it. So the fact that they put this inside for the card is precious. Um, it's just reversed it right away. But then I have a very sweet note in here from a viewer and a friend. Um, Julie, thank you so much. Um, I don't have permission to, to share her full name, so I won't. But she saw one of my most recent videos where I showed a finish of mine. Uh, it was one of my Valentine's finishes and it was called Valentine Day. And this is the finish. And it just has two colors in it. It was really, really a fun stitch. I was thrilled that I got to finish it. And I was talking about, I wanna make it into a little pillow and that I need to make sure I needed to look to see if I had some fabric in my stash that would look good uh, with this piece. And Julie contacted me on an email and said, I'm a quilter, I have lots of fabric, and I think I have something that would be perfect to back your pillow. And she sent me pictures, and um, she actually had more than one piece for me to choose from, and this is the one I chose. And I won't tell you, Julie, it's beautiful. <laughs> so here's the fabric. It's so pretty. I love the fact that it has the exact color of green and red in it that's on the, the cross stitch piece. And I love the fact that the background color blends so well with my sand castle. So let me show you this together. You're gonna love it. There's the piece and there's the backing fabric. Isn't that beautiful? I don't think you could match it any better. So anyway, thank you, Julie. Very, very kind of you to share that with me. And thank you for the card. And hey, if you're watching, email me where you got these. I want some of these. Those are precious. So anyway, that's my uh, happy mail is that now I have my backing fabric so I can make that into a pillow, thanks to Julie. Appreciate it so much. Happy stitching, everyone. I hope you're enjoying March Madness if you're participating. Hello, everyone. Welcome back again. This is Dina. Today is Sunday. It is March 7th, and I am tickled to death to be able to share with you that it is still early afternoon and I have been able to stitch on two of my projects. So I got one done last night, stayed up a little late to get it done, but that's okay. And then I got the second one done this morning and these are two that have to be compared to each other. So I'm ready to share that with you now, both my progress on these projects and which one is gonna go forward. 
So the very first one was a new start. It was my Winter Arbor by the Drawn Thread. I think that is absolutely beautiful. And I have actually ordered the silks to go with it because there were only four. And I, instead of getting a white silk, I'm just using regular white DMC. And I started at the very tip top of that border, which is that white border at the top. This is a part of my whip go as well. And my whip go goal is to actually finish the very first row. Well, what do I consider a row? <laughs> Is a row the very tip top little one, or is it the that one and the one right immediately below it, or is it the entire thing? I don't know, we'll see. But here's what I got done. So I got the tip top done, and I've not quite finished the row right below it because I'm going just down the middle here and moving my way out. So I made the decision <laughs> that my top row is going to be that entire top white border for my whip go board because I think I can get that done in a year without any trouble. So this is what my stitches look like from yesterday. It was 280 of them and it was simply that many because I wanted to finish that swirl out and stop it at a place right here at the bottom of this little heart so it'll be easy to pick up next time and get started. I don't want to have to sit here and figure out where I'm at. And you see, I've still got my thread hanging and my needle in it and everything from last night because I just put it down and went to bed. But uh, I will put it away properly today once I have all my pictures made and post everything um, that I need to post. Now, the second one that was pitted against this one is a full, um, actual a full coverage piece. And uh, pardon me as I grab the picture here. You'll recognize it. It's a Christmas ornament, my uh, vintage Christmas ornament. And as you know, I'm doing this one, which was number one on the list uh, of how they were created, I guess. Anyway, it's the one with the Santa Claus on the roof. And um, so today I decided I was gonna stitch my 200 stitches in it, and then I checked my notes, and I had identified this as a um, project for another prompt uh, that I need to meet this month, and it was 300 stitches, so I just went ahead and did 300 stitches, you know me. So let me show you where that got me to. I filled in this whole salmon-colored house that has a shade up here of a different salmon and then this lighter color and I completed the rest of the bow it had a second color in it that I needed to put in and I did one full color of green in the tree and I've started on the second one and I've gotten to 309 stitches so I am going to call it a, a stop for today um, because I needed to decide between these two pieces which one's going forward so I think you can tell this one is almost halfway done. And even though it is full coverage, it's small. And my other one is on my whip go board anyway. So um, uh, this one may be as well. I didn't go back and look, but this may be a finish on my whip go board. So I think this one is gonna go forward and get more work on it next week. So you'll get to see that one again, which I'm very excited about. So there you have it, that's it. That's my progress so far today. Now, what do I have left to do? Well, that's fairly easy. There's only two left. So looking at my handwritten notes from the beginning, I have to work on my autumn bell pull. It is also on my whip go board. I have to finish a letter and I am still trying to finish the letter A. 200 stitches might do it today, we will see. So I might actually hit a whip go bowl, uh, goal today, which would be awesome. But I've got that uh, pitted with my here a peep, there a peep, which will be a new start. So it'll be uh, the same as me comparing the arbor, you know, winter arbor to my um, full coverage. I will be comparing that big long bell pull to a new start. So I think in this case, even if I don't get to stitch both of them today, 
my hero peep there peep would be finished quicker than the bell pull. So I'll talk to you later if I can, and if not, happy stitching. Hi everyone, <laughs> welcome back. This is Dina and I am here just to wrap up my day's stitching activities with you um, before I head on off to bed. Coco has abandoned me and is hanging out, I think, on the living room couch waiting for me to come to my senses. Um, anyway, I wanna show you what I was able to get done today um, to finish up. And I am so happy to tell you that I did get to stitch all eight of my March Madness pieces. It doesn't matter that I did the last four between yesterday and today. I got them done. <laughs> I'm really tickled about that. So let's get started. The first one, I'll just remind you, this is my autumn bell pull. I had started on the A. This is the letter that I'm trying to finish on my whip go board and I was hopeful that putting in 200 stitches today uh, might really push it forward and then I realized I had it for a prompt <laughs> in another Facebook group and I needed 300 stitches for that one so I just went ahead and and I put in 306 stitches so that I could get both of them done and um and that's probably why it's a little bit later than I had hoped it would be today, but I wanna show you where I got to. This is thrilling to me because when I started this piece, I had part of the greenery done here underneath this section of this A. I didn't have any of the red in there for the, I think that's supposed to be a big red apple. Um, but to me, it looks a little odd because it's got a pumpkin next to it and the apple looks almost as big as the pumpkin. But anyway, <clears throat> as you can tell, there's something missing right here. And what that is, is the beautiful purple, I'm thinking wisteria, but it's right there at the foot. And then I have the little end of the A to do. And then you'll see there's these wispy um, things that look like maybe wheat uh, in the middle of the A and then poking up from behind that pumpkin. And then I've got the lettering, which will be just a, you know, a few minutes to do. But what I'm thrilled about is that in the course of my 300 stitches today, I completely finished the cross stitching under here other than the little wispy wheat and I came over here and I finished all of the pumpkin and greenery that's over here with the exception of that wheat. Everything's done except those little purple flowers. So I'm thinking that another really good stitching session on it and I will be finished with it. And so I'm gonna keep this one out and I'm gonna work on it whenever I can next week um, because this is my whip go. Um, one of my numbers that was pulled this month. And so I'm so close now to getting this letter finished. Um, and I'm sorry, it's washed out so much. Let me move that light a little bit. There you go. Um, I'm so close to getting this letter finished. And since that's the WIPGO uh, board goal is to get the letter finished, I would like to keep it out and see if I can't get knock that out next week. I think that would be awesome and then I would probably wait till April uh, to start the next letter okay so that's that I'll go back and tell you one other thing really quick I showed you autumn arbor earlier today at 280 stitches and then I found another prompt um, that I was supposed to be stitching it for I had, I had taken my starting picture and everything but I needed 300 stitches so I picked this thing back up just a little while ago when I swapped off between my two um, things that I had to get done today, my uh, autumn bell pull and my new start, here I peep, there I peep. And I came back in here and I stitched 
a little more. If you recall, I had stopped right at the bottom of this heart right here. I had not gone any further. And so what I did instead is I went ahead and I went, started working this on a cross. And so I added the additional 20 stitches I needed um, in this, from the center out, so that I could um, be ready uh, to uh, take that picture and meet that prompt as well um, by using this piece for that. That was too close not to go back and get 20 stitches. You know what I mean? That just, that didn't take long at all to finish that up. So now I can put that away. Again, this is a whip go um, goal I mentioned earlier to do that top border. So that one's gonna be coming back out. Um, although it is not, it is, it is also, that was my other number call this month. So that one's coming right back out this month as well. Okay, my new start for March Madness is here a peep, there a peep. It's so cute, it's a Brenda Gervais. I just love it. And on my, it's not on my uh, Whipgo board. So it was just one I wanted to start and I, I decided to put it in my March Madness and so that's what I did. Um, Here's where I got to. Now, this is the little face of the, the little, the little uh, chick. Um, I had to stitch, I had to stitch part of this twice. When I went to start this beautiful piece right here that forms part of the oval around the whole thing, I accidentally started counting off of this leaf up here instead of this leaf down there. So I had mine going way up here and coming over about right here, which would have been way too high. And when I realized it, I had to frog out all of this swirl. I had not done the leaf yet, thank goodness, because that's the heaviest part of that stitching. But anyway, this is a beautiful R&R &R linen. It is 32 count. Now this pattern is called for to be on a 40 count linen so that it's a really tiny, tiny piece. But I didn't have any 40 count linen in my stash, so I didn't get to do that. But I did want to share it with you um, as far as my progress because this is the one going forward simply because uh, it'll be much easier to finish this before I would that whole autumn bell pull. As you can imagine, it's taking me a long time to finish the letter A. I think I figured it out why though. It's extremely um, detailed. It doesn't have a lot of back stitching in this letter, but it has a lot of shading, lots of shading. It, well, you know, it's a Stony Creek. If you've ever stitched one, you know what that means. So anyway, now the good news is I've stitched on all eight of my, um, pieces for March Madness and I will take a few minutes here now and check my calendar uh, and make sure that I write down what I'm going to stitch on each day next week uh, because I now know exactly what's going forward between every pairing that I had. So I'm going to say good night, happy stitching to you all, and until next time, take care.
I can get his hand off, but I can still feel it. When summer comes, well, summer's over. Well, summer's coming, so we'll, uh, I got it. I'm looking for this back foot right here. Give me this foot. Give me this foot. Come here. All right, get ready. Licking her paws, she's starting to slow down some. So. Is that better? Then you can come in, but don't mess with her otherwise, because she's wild. She does mad you a lot. Look at me. Shh. Don't bite me. May I? May I touch your face? Let me see your face. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Oh, that's a good girl. Oh. Are you ready to go, you ready to go to the blow dryer? If I could do this, we wouldn't have to spend so much time in the blow dryer. Come here. Let's yell. Let's yell.